Hey, y'all. What's going on? So I'm going to let y'all jump on in here. I have not done a live in Lord knows how long. So Juby got me on live. Uh, how long is after, that? It's been a long time. It's been, I, it's, it's been probably maybe about a month and a half or so that I'm I on see, live, which for me is a long time. I see you haven't put down your balloons yet. No, I haven't. You see they falling down. They oh, they tied to me. So one of them is deflated and the other one is like, can you please stop fixing me because I'm ready to come down. I need to uh, fix the tape on the balloon. Hey, y'all. So I want to wait until all of you start to pop on in here so we can get started. And because I, I have some really good information about Yellowtail Tech, uh, which is an e-learning program that is helping people break into tech in the most unique way possible. And our special guest is one of the co-founders of Yellowtail Tech. So I'm really excited to for all of you to meet him. Hi. Hi, everybody. Please tell us where you all are tuning into. Um, and Juby will tell you where Yellowtail Tech is and how it came about. We're, go, we're going to go into all of that. As Juby is talking about him and Yellowtail Tech and what Yellowtail Tech has to offer, I'm also going to be putting the link inside of the chat for Yellowtail Tech so that you all can duplicate your screens and you'll have information on it. So I'm going to give you all a few minutes or not a few minutes, a few seconds to tell me where you are. I see up oh, DMV. You got one. You got one. South Carolina, South Carolina New York City, Dallas, Alabama. Alabama. I love it. Okay, uh, NC, we, we Carolina. neighbors. Okay, okay, um, Calvin, we neighbors. Calvin, so for those of you who don't know, um, you probably don't know because I didn't say it, but on my post today, uh, since I celebrated two years at my at my company, um, and I said the, the guy I went to college with, Said I never changed who I was. That was Calvin. So shout out to Calvin. Uh, oh, we got another DMV, Tierra. All right, okay. Tierra. So Oakland if you see, Atlanta, if you see Juby, if you see Juby in the DMV, <laughs> shout him out. All right, y'all. So I have a good 68 of y'all that is tuning in. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so I want I want to introduce Juby, who is one of the co-founders of Yellow Cell Tech alongside his wife, Paloma. Uh, I have had a pleasure of talking to both of them and they have been a true joy to get to know and to talk to, especially when it comes to, to business. And so I want Juby to introduce himself and then we're going to go into some questions. And also before Juby starts talking, y'all, if y'all have any questions, please put it in the chat so I can, we can bring you up. And then that way I'm able to have Juby answer your live questions. All right, Juby, take it away. All right. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, Man, introducing myself. Okay, I'm the CEO at Yellowtail Tech. Uh, we launched this company uh, in, officially in 2016. But the way that this company came about is a story um, that um, will tell you a lot about our motivation. So uh, in 2014, my wife uh, decided to transition away from um, being a social scientist. Her background is in social science. And she wanted to um, become a nutrition nutritionist. And uh, she loved nutrition in general. She wanted to be a nutritionist. But I, I suggested that she considered IT because I have a background in IT. I have a, a, a degree in management information system from the University, University of Maryland. And I also am a Linux system administrator, but I was a little bit removed from um, the day-to-day -day of a Linux system administrator at this point of my career. So I called my friends who are still engineers, still Linux system administrators. We sat together and we put to get, together a quick curriculum for her to study, to actually transition. So um, it took her 11 months of still studying and support uh, to be able to actually transition into her first um, IT job while um, uh, um, managing a, a, a baby uh, our daughter was uh, around eight months at the at the time so it was a lot but we did it and um, friends and family started talking and asking ab about how we did it um, I, uh, we started helping family friends and we, we we kept doing that between 2014 and 16 just helping people 
In 2016, we realized that we have a strong enough curriculum to be able to offer it to the marketplace. This is when we officially launched the company. So it's not uh, a story of a very systematic startup with a very clear uh, idea about how we were going to overtake the market. It was my wife was customer number one. We helped people. We did two, uh, two years of helping people just figuring out what, what we could deliver to the marketplace. And we launched in 2016. Since then, we... Um, we trained uh, um, uh, over a thousand students. We uh, now offer uh, additional programs, not only Linux system administration, but uh, cloud um, system administration as well. We, we've we grown over 260% uh, um, from 2020 uh, to 2023. We, we became uh, one of the fastest growing company according to Inc. 5000 for 2023. So we've, we've grown, we've helped a lot of people transition into the IT uh, industry for the past um, few years. And we're going to keep doing that for at least uh, the next 20 years. Keep doing it. Keep so doing that's, it. Uh, that's, a, that's a very uh, condensed version of, um, of who I am, what I do. And I'm sure you're going to pull more out of me, you know, in terms of... Uh, <laughs> Having definitely, more, your definitely heart, you know a little more about me. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned that you have a background in information management systems. So, uh, which means you have a degree. So, yes. can you tell us a little bit about your role, your specific role within the Yellow Tail Tech business? Uh, are you on the technical side of it? Are you on the business side of it? Tell us a little bit about that. So, I went to school to study exactly what I'm doing now, which is I studied. Uh, uh, management of technology. I'm in the business of managing technology. So for me, I'm not, I, I, I had a very short stint of uh, being a Linux system administrator, but I'm more in the business development side of the house. That's what, that's my wheelhouse. So um, to answer your question, I am not terribly technical. It's it even less uh, because I focus more on growing the company on uh, uh, creating a culture uh, uh, for the company, um, you know, looking, trying to look around the corner for the company, because now we have a team, uh, a big team that has very specific tasks. My job most of the days is to set the vision, uh, make sure we uh, stay true to the vision of helping people with no IT background transition into the IT industry. So that's what I do. Uh, my role is not technical at all. Paloma's role is, uh, 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 she's the technical person. She's responsible of curriculum design. She actually goes in and makes sure we are delivering the best in terms of um, technical uh, um, training. So I do, I, 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 I stay on the business side of the house. So we talked about you having a degree in um, in your related field, and you're actually working in your degree. And I think you mentioned that a lot of a lot of people don't have the privilege of having a degree and working in the exact business that they that yeah. they want to that they went to school for. So my my next question is. Um, Tell me a little bit about the, what the gaps are that you've seen in people who get a college degree versus people who go to the alter, alternative route. Is it harder or easier when someone has a degree versus someone who has the alternative route? And how has Yellowtail Tech filled that gap? Uh, I think if we're talking about 10 years ago versus now, it's two different conversation. I think when I was going uh, uh, you know, to the marketplace, having a degree, was important, but I still had to go get the technical skills. I still had to go to my mentor and get the uh, uh, and, and get Linux skills. Um, I will forever be thankful to Jonas Oquar who introduced me to Linux. So it's all it, despite the degree, you're gonna find yourself needing specific uh, uh, technical skills that you can show up to the marketplace and add value from day one. Um, a degree usually doesn't offer that because a degree tends to be very generic, especially yeah. when you're talking about IT degrees. Especially nowadays, uh, a degree is even less important 
to actually get into the IT industry. And I want to emphasize it to get into the IT industry. If you still, if you want to be a JD, you still have to go to, to, to college, right? You do. <laughs> if you're MD, you still have to go to college. But if you want to break into the IT industry, you don't necessarily need that. It doesn't even necessarily help you. What will help you, though, aside from the technical skills, is to have those soft uh, skills, so those um, those corporate skills that are important. So transition straight from a blue co collar uh, job into the corporate world, you're going to have a lot of gap in knowledge. You're going to know how to do the work, do the IT work, but you're going to need some skills to navigate the corporate uh, uh, um, apparatus. So that's also what college kind of helps with. But um, there are other ways that you can um, fill in those gaps. You know? Love that. I see a question in the chat, and I think this is really a really good time to answer a live question. So Nathan asks, is Yellowtail Tech just for transitioners? Yes. Um, in fact, I have a story around that. We, Me with my business mind, when we launched, my, uh, my idea was to focus on people who already are in the industry, who are, you know, help desk people, people who actually have some type of uh, training, because it would be easier to actually help these people just level up. But it took me two years and look at my uh, success or failure for those two years. And I looked and the pattern was clear. Everyone that were succeeding were people with absolutely no IT background. It's funny, but I think I know why. It's because when people come with absolutely no IT background, they come as a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. They come to learn, they come to soak up everything you throw at them. So it's easier to train them. And um, someone with some IT background, they come with questions, they come with, they come to question- They question you on everything. <laughs> more than to learn, you see? So at this point, I was like, why I, do I keep advertising to people who are not receptive to, my, to, to what we offer? And this is when we, start, we realize there is a niche out there, which is a, a people with absolutely no IT background needing a space to, 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 um, to, to come. So that's why you're going to see that our programs are intentionally slower. They, intentionally, uh, they are intentionally designed for someone with absolutely no IT background. They offer the contextual knowledge, the contextual understanding of IT necessary. Because you're going to see most other programs, they, they, they train people with no IT background, but they rather not. We make it our business to train people with no IT background. This is the biggest difference, I think, uh, between our offering and others. We make it our business. We actually um, prefer to train at this point people with no IT background because uh, the way our program is designed, the way we deliver our program, the way we, uh, we offer support is intended and designed for someone with no IT background. In fact, someone with, with IT background might even get bored in our program because it's intended, it's built, it's taught in a way where it caters more to to the to a person with absolutely no IT background. So tell us a little bit about yellow what Yellowtail Tech specifically offers. I know there are two different courses that people can choose from, and then I know you all are doing some upgrades. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, we uh, our flagship most uh, uh, our oldest program is uh, Linux for Jobs. This is where we train you to become a Linux system administrator. Um, we start you with IT infrastructure and networking, make sure you have the foundational knowledge. We move you into the core part of the program, which is Linux. Make sure you, you come out as a Linux system administrator. Uh, and we move you into CERT prep, where we make sure you not only come with a completion certificate, but you come out with a certification independently from Yellowtail Tech, a certification from a, a from a, uh, a, a company that is a billion dollar company, an IBM company called Red Hat. So uh, when you show up with that certification in Australia and um, anywhere in the world, it carries weight. Forget about Yellowtail Tech. You know, a few people know about Yellowtail Tech, but most employers know about Red Hat. 
they know about sure. AWS, right? So we make sure we have a capstone. The capstone is the Red Hat Certified System Administrator Certification. And then after that, we move you into an apprenticeship. This is because we know that there's the catch 22. You need a job to get the experience, but wherever do you get that experience if you never got the job, right? So we've partnered up with a company to um, um, offer an apprenticeship where you're gonna be solving real tickets on real servers from a real company so you can get that hands-on. Now it's a shorter, uh, it's a it's short uh, um, apprenticeship, but it gives you that uh, contextual knowledge, that, that hands-on knowledge that you can put on your resume. And then we move you into career support with a dedicated uh, career success coach. This is for the Linux for Jobs program. A Cloud for Jobs program is a robust program uh, intended for people for, for high performance. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It's a, it's a very intense program. It's a one-year program. It's a program that's designed to train you to become a cloud system administrator. You come out with three certs. You come out with um, the RHCSA, you come out with uh, an AWS SysOp certification, and you come out with a, a, a Security Plus. And there is a very uh, um, strict, rather strict application process where we make sure uh, we are convinced that you can not only afford the program, but you can also succeed in the program. It's very important for that program. Uh, we only, uh, for 2024, we will only train 80 students uh, because we want to keep uh, the quality of the students we bring in where it's supposed to be so we can actually uh, produce. You don't want to crowd your classes. Not only that, we, we want to produce the result we promised. So um, it's a very interesting program. Uh, you're going to get the, 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 the support you need in this program but it's limited in, um, uh, for, for 80 students. So these are the, are the two programs we, we offer right now. We are also launching a community called Career Skills for Jobs. We realize there is one gap in the, in the marketplace. Yes, we're always talking about how it's important to train people on the technical skills, which is what we do. But what we realize is because we train people with no IT background that are coming from uh, non-corporate uh, jobs, they have a lot of uh, skill gap when it comes to soft skill and corporate skills like technical writing, salary negotiation, LinkedIn revamping, you name it, uh, uh, cross uh, 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 cultural uh, uh, workplace uh, um, awareness, all these things. So we're gonna have, we're gonna offer a platform where our students, our prospects, people who are even thinking about uh, um, uh, um, um, a, a, a career in IT could start there, could start learning those soft skills because we understand that not only if you are interested, but even after you get your first job, these. Uh, uh, um, these skills are important and there's going to be a community aspect to this because one uh, thing I noticed by going to a lot of um, uh, tech conference is the question I always ask is why are you here? And it's always, I want to be next to actual real people. So there's going to be a component where we try to take the community offline as much as possible for people to meet to mingle, to hang out, to learn together, and to actually just, you know, um, be uh, in person together. So there's going to be that component to this uh, to the platform. There's also going to be the component of public speaking. Um, we've we've read, we've researched, and we realized the best skill for a career transitioner to have is the public speaking skill because it helps so much when it's time to actually show up in a, in a job interview. So these are the things we're gonna have on the platform. This is gonna be definitely a, compli a, a, a something to complement our technical skills that we offer to our students or to our prospects in general. So we I have a that. lot we're working on. 
I love that. So you already touched on this a little bit when you talked about the apprenticeships. Can you go a little bit into into detail about because you you mentioned real life, like real time type of experience. Can you go into detail about the the real time experience and how you can um, mirror that real time experience on your resume? And I ask that question because I'm seeing a lot of programs where people are investing their time and their money into these different programs and they're putting they're putting like the internship part or the apprenticeship part on their resume and to people like me or other recruiters technically that may not have been experience that may just be practice so it may be under the wrong section so can you tell us a little bit of a difference in them and in, in what I've seen in other companies as far as you having real time experience where other companies may just give you practice, if that makes sense. Okay, so there's difference between practice and the apprenticeship because the apprenticeship you are actually building servers, you are solving tickets, uh, uh, you are doing the work. But the only thing is, it's 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 a two months uh, pro, uh, it's a two months program where you're going to be solving eighty to ninety tickets uh, for the Linux for Jobs program. Uh, it's remote. You're going to be required to work at least 10 hours a week for those two months. For the Cloud for Job, it's a three months program. You're going to be uh, 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 working 10 hours a week for, uh, for three months. Now, you, can, you will be able to put this as uh, uh, a, a apprenticeship as experience because it is indeed experience because you're going to be doing solving real tickets and uh, on actual... Um, enterprise level tools as well. So there is the difference between labs that is a, a more of a component of the training aspect and the apprenticeship, which is more, uh, um, yeah, you get assigned a ticket and your job is to solve the issue. I love that. So we, we, talk, we talked a little bit about the experience that Yellow Silk Tech gives you, the certifications that Yellow Silk Tech gives you, and even the different programs that it that it offers students who do not have uh, any type of IT or technical type of background. What what is the difference between Yellow Silk Tech program and let's say any other training or like tech training or e learning platform that people can actually invest their time and their their kind of um, their time into so what is it what because i i understand yellow tail tech as somewhere in between more than a boot camp less than an associate's degree yeah. and you yeah. all fall like right in the middle yeah. so what what sets you apart and why did you even design it that way um we designed it that way from for a few reasons first the reason why most of the offerings are set up the way they are set up, it's because they are selling to what the consumer is demanding. The consumer typically demands, how can I, what's the least amount of time I have to be in your, in your program? And what's the most amount of money I can make when I leave? And what's the least amount of money I can pay? For example, I already see a, a, a comment that says, how many backflips I need to make to get a discount? People, that's how, they're not focused on value. They are focused on how, what's the least amount of money I can pay and go get that $100,000 job. So we depart completely from this model. We are not catering to what people want to hear. We are catering to what we know works. For people with absolutely no IT background, it is impossible to properly help you transition in three months. You can forget it. Not even in six. In fact, uh, on average, it takes between training and uh, job search, it takes a year. Yep. Uh, um, I, 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 my, my, uh, my wife um, stumbled on a, on, a, on, a, on a survey where the average people, it takes them 13 months on average. I'm talking about real numbers. If it scares you, so be it. But the reality is it takes 13 months on average after training to get a job. OK, so we are not in the business of selling what people want to hear. Uh, our programs are intentionally slow, uh, slower uh, to actually allow you time to actually get the material. Our program intentionally in, in, include contextual training, which is network 
uh, uh, tra networking training, IT infrastructure training, make sure you get a certification, uh, um, more support, give you additional uh, uh, um, uh, training if you want it. For example, the Linux, uh, uh, the Linux system administration program now, we offer the Security Plus if you want to take it because we understand these things matter, especially when you are about to get your first job. So what makes us different is that we are not catering to people who are trying to do this in the microwave format. All right. We don't claim okay. to be the best. We don't claim to be uh, 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 the quick fix. We claim to help you build a career that's sustainable. So that's why we think we are different. We don't uh, boot camp to us implies two things rushed and fast. In short, three things, short, uh, uh, fast, and rushed. We are everything but that. So that's what we think makes us different. I love that. And I, I love the I love the transparency in it because I tell people all the time that if you want to go in any kind of program that you decide to go to, that's your decision. But I tell people if you wanna, if you want a quick fix, then you you really don't want to stay marketable for real. It takes time in energy in like true dedication and discipline to actually master something where where it'll allow you to stay marketable and it's not a it's not just a a quick thing where it's oh i have experience in this and maybe i can just pivot into the tech industry because i already have the experience it's when i when i'm making offers or where i'm talking and networking to people i think it's interesting of, of just their ex the amount of time that they took to actually become a subject matter expert in what they do. And it sounds like that is exactly what Yellowtail exactly. Tech is, is producing, example, is producing yeah. experts. For example, uh, it's not to bash on whoever said how many black flips I need to get a discount. Me as a consumer, my questions would be, what kind of value are you offering for your money? What kind of value am I gonna get for my money? What am I getting? You see what I mean? Because Cheaper is not always even better. In yes. fact, cheaper about is it. rarely better. Talk <laughs> about it. You see what I mean? And I'm not in the business of, you know, uh, 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 the rush to the bottom where we are not, uh, we are offering a program so cheap, we cannot even make it sustainable to be, to exist in the next five years. I am not interested in that. I'm interested right. in offering real value. And this comes with a cost. And, um, that's what it, it's going to be. So yes, we do offer uh, um, um, some discounts sometimes, but I do not want to cater to anyone who's only coming for discounts and cheap uh, uh, and quick fix. If that's the right. mindset, Yellowtail is not Yellowtail Tech is not the program for you. There that's are facts. definitely cheaper programs out there. That's facts, and that's that's facts because I've actually. Before I got into tech, when I was in healthcare, higher education, and um, if I got taken by the ringer or if like whatever it was, I was fine with saying, maybe this job is just not for you. Maybe we are not for you. And that's OK. And it's it's OK because the transparency in it is we're catering to a certain audience. If you are not within that audience, that's fine. Go find you are in a specific audience, go find the service that caters to your specific audience. And I think the transparency in that is beautiful. Yeah, and let me tell you, the person who comes with the how much is it mindset always focus more on that than the growth opportunity, than the training opportunity we're offering them. You see what I mean? We, we try a lot to attract the right kind of students. And that's also why we limit our, our Cloud for Jobs program to only 80 students a year, at least for 2024. This is our goal. Only train. We have literally uh, application coming in every day that we, uh, we make a decision to not go with because there are very specific things we are looking for to guarantee you and ourselves that we can be successful with you. I love so. that. And I, I love that you all sift through your application pool. It, it's like a college program where you may not even be accepted into the program because there is a certain level of dedication that you need in order for in order to be successful. So you talked you talked a little bit 
um, about this. And I actually want to, Robin actually asked a really good question. You touched on it a little bit. How long is the Linux program? And can you speak mm -hmm. about placement at higher percentages yeah. for graduates? So the program itself uh, for Linux for job is six months. Uh, after that, you move into uh, uh, um, the apprenticeship for two months. Uh, you usually get a few months. Uh, it depends on how fast you want to move. But on average, two months after that uh, for career support, dedicated career support. And on average, it takes people uh, five months to get a job. Uh, the placement rate is about 68% uh, uh, of job placement rate within the first six months. And it, when we expand the, uh, um, the job placement rate on a year, we see our, our placement rate goes up to 78 to 79% job placement rate within a year. Our goal is to uh, recruit and, and, and enroll uh, uh, well and enroll people that we are convinced can uh, uh, complete the program uh, to get to the 90%. This is our goal. It's a three to four year goal, but uh, this is where we want to get to with the program. Is the program self-paced? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not self <laughs> Why not? It's not be. Uh, because of uh, the uh, the the um, because of the demography we are serving, uh, we we are anti self paced In fact, because we believe that is the part of the success, the secret sauce, the magic, however you want to call it, of Yellowtail Tech, the cohort format, where we start with a, a group, you uh, create. Um, uh, uh, bond with that group, you uh, uh, move along with that group, it keeps you accountable. And um, we also understand who's falling behind. We have uh, uh, um, tools and processes to help you keep up with the, with, with the training. We think uh, a self-paced program will, uh, um, will not deliver that kind of result. So no, we are absolutely not self-paced. We so are when more, it comes to we are when it comes to volume, high value type of uh, of um, company, as opposed to self based program, they are usually a, a, high, a low value but high volume. So the self based yeah. programs they're usually cheaper, but way more people enroll, and they don't care or guarantee the results. Because us, we guarantee the result. If you don't land a job within five months. Uh, after you complete your internship, you get your money back. Uh, yeah, I heard that. If you don't get a job within six months after completing your internship for the club for jobs, you get your money back. Of course, we have clear stipulations, uh, stipulations yeah. to make it fair, but you will have access to the stipulation. Make sure they make sense for you. But we uh, only, uh, I, I couldn't offer that in a self-paced uh, um, format. So, um, because it's not self-paced, I'm sure that it'll be difficult for people who have a full-time job. Do people normally quit their jobs when they go yeah. into Yellowstone Tech, or how do they juggle being yeah. able to have the full-time job and doing the program? Uh, it's First, I want to tell you this this program is designed for people with a life, meaning with a job, with, you know, with real things going on in their lives. So uh, it's it, all uh, the courses are usually offered on the evening. Uh, the live sessions. Um, now, how do people usually do? Uh, they they sacrifice. They sacrifice something. They enroll their 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 network, their support system, their parents, their spouse. Uh, um, that's also the kind of conversation we have to make sure you have not only the money, the will, but the time and the bandwidth to do this. You know, I don't care if you come ready to to enroll. If your schedule doesn't allow for six to ten hours of studying outside of class, I am not gonna uh, uh, um, suggest for you to enroll. We are very much about the success of the student as opposed to just enrollment. So to answer your question, it's it's unfortunate. We have a lot of uh, we have many people interested, eager excited about joining Yellow Tail Tech, but their schedule doesn't allow it. 
So if they so if their schedule doesn't allow it now, do you recommend that they come back when their schedule does? Do you do you do you even do you and this may be very much against like competition purposes, but would you would you refer a, a program that may fit their schedule or do you just recommend when you can when you can juggle and handle both having a job as well as yellow Hill tech then come back? If they want to if they are uh, committed to being in Linux or in cloud, we just pl uh, uh, plan with them how to come back. If they want to consider other uh, um, uh, tracks in IT, we, we recommend them other, other programs that are self-paced. Uh, definitely. Because it's not about competition. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's enough people transitioning into IT for me to get all my numbers and everybody else to actually enroll people. So it's it's not necessarily about competition. Is can international job seekers take your course? Uh, your program? It, uh, no, for a few very important reasons. In fact, if you are outside of the U.S., once you get on the website, it's going to tell you that we only serve uh, people who are in the U.S. or who are U.S. residents or military people. We serve them. Military people who are in um, deployment, yes, we do serve them. But if you are outside of the country and you intend to pursue a career outside of the U.S., we don't cater uh, um, to, to international students for two reasons. First, we have a big, in fact, the biggest component of our program is a career support. And we only understand and, and, and master uh, the, the U.S. marketplace. So we couldn't help you navigate any other marketplace. It'd be Canada or Australia or, or UK. That's the first thing. Um, so we couldn't keep our promise our, 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 to, our, to our student in terms of helping them transition. Uh, secondly, uh, we work with um, financing partners that only uh, are able to extend credit to uh, US uh, 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 people with uh, established credit in the U.S. So these are the two main reasons why we only cater to U.S. Uh, um, students. Do you all normally have students in your program who actually have degrees but decided to take your program anyway yes. because they need mm -hmm. they they just got, didn't they they they're getting something from your program that they did not get in their college? Program. Oh yeah. We have two kinds of students. In fact, more than 50% of our students have a have a bachelor's degree or higher. Oh, wow. uh, in another in another field, uh, sometimes, oftentimes from another country. Okay. Um, we we cater a lot to uh, immigrants who have dozens of degrees, like my wife, you yeah. know, uh, uh, from when she transitioned, her degree, you know, um, doesn't hold the same weight in the U.S. and a lot of people, uh, uh, um, you know, face that fact. Instead of mm -hmm. starting all over, this is uh, the the you know the most obvious route. Uh, and yeah, so that was the question, right? Yep. So yeah, uh, uh, more than fifty percent of uh, people who enroll have a, a a a degree of some sort, bachelor's or higher, in another. Um, in another um, field. You also mentioned earlier that you were going to, you were expanding the program a little bit more to like Cloud for Jobs 2.0, where you're kind of getting a, a, a better deal of a better version of the old program, so to speak. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about what's changing and what's improving. Mm -hmm. Well, what's changing is that uh, now it basically we've expanded the program because the marketplace has shown us in the past three years that most employers are looking for um, cloud professionals with heavy Linux knowledge because most uh, 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 environments are still a hybrid environment. You're not going to, you rarely are going to get to an environment where they only have cloud, cloud assets. They're going to have servers that run Linux as well. So we've extended our program where you come out with three certification instead of one right now. Uh, you're going to come out with the Red Hat certification. 
which is a Linux certification. You're going to come out with an AWS SysOps certification, and you're going to come out with a Security Plus. The Security Plus is to help you position yourself uh, for GovTech, uh, uh, for the GovTech uh, um, field, because we also are encouraging uh, people to actually look at GovTech as a, a way to get into the industry. And um, most GovTech job, not for technical reasons, but for security reasons, they uh, they require that security plus. So that's that. These are the few things we we've tweaked, we've tweaked uh, and 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 added to the Cloud for Jobs 2.0. And of course, um, uh, um, shrink uh, uh, the 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 amount of students we train and uh, also increase the the, the standards. Uh, of acceptance for the program. So that these are the changes we've made to the Cloud for Jobs program. You mentioned Security Plus, and that I went like this when you mentioned Security Plus. Um, is Security Plus the same thing as having a security clearance? And if no. not, if not, are you all thinking about or trying to teach people how to navigate that process? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, a Security Plus, helps position you to be able to get a security clearance because a job that requires a security clearance usually by a, 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 as a government requirement requires that you have a security plus not for any technical reasons for security reasons because a security plus mostly shows you how to navigate a high a security environment you see, because our, our goal for the next three years also is to pivot slightly, but pivot uh, uh, into the Gulf tech uh, 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 industry, help attract uh, mo more students towards uh, Gulf tech jobs, uh, recruit uh, students who already um, have a security clearance, recruit uh, transitioning military uh, people uh, who are more likely to be eligible for a security clearance. If you have a security clearance uh, from a, a job that's not related to IT, uh, we want to talk to you because we know that's the easiest way by far to break into this industry. Because here's the problem, Shane. Having a security clearance and having technical uh, uh, um, training and having a security plus rarely comes in the same person. Mm -hmm. The person either have a security clearance or they have the training. So yep. they never come in the same person. So um, jobs that requires a security clearance go months on field because they never can get someone who already have the security clearance and the training. So if we can find these uh, uh, people with security clearance already, I'm telling you now, uh, whoever is listening, if you have a friend who's working at the cafeteria in a in a in a, in a um, in a, uh, in a uh, military base, they need a security clearance. These are the people we're looking for. Uh, that means they have a security clearance. These are the people who are most likely to just get the training and get a job in months, even weeks, because it's, it's so difficult to get someone with already a security clearance who have the technical training. So that's, that's, the, that's the niche and the opportunity we see and we try to we, we are we uh, in the next few years we're going to try to uh, uh tap into that opportunity more and more one of the things that i did not ask was so in whether no matter the program that you do whether it's a college associate's degree boot camp program in general i've learned that when you invest time and money into different programs, they graduate you and then they send you out to the world and go, okay, now go find a job. Does Yellowtail Tech have what I call a handholder between oh, yeah. the time you graduate and the time you actually find a job? Do they have someone to fill in the gap listen, to help you throughout that process? Listen, I had such a bad experience in college. This is, this is exactly why I call this program Linux for Jobs. It's because I never wanted to forget why we are training you in the first place. You're gonna notice it's called cloud for jobs. It's because if you get trained with Yellowtail, you don't come out with a job, I failed. I am not in the business of training. 
Yellowtail Tech is not in the business of training. Yellowtail Tech is in the business of helping you transition into, uh, into your first IT job. So yes, we help you, we handhold you. And that's the only measure of success for us. That's the single measure of success. It's, how, it's not how much you love our instructors. It's not how great the teaching was. Um, it's did you get a job as a result of working with us? So yes, there is a lot of handholding and support that happens. And I love that because a lot of people who break into tech, myself included, we were babies going into it. If you're looking for a job and you're coming out of school or you've had a job for a long period of time and now you're back on the market and you haven't looked in a long time, you've become a baby again. And so I think it's important when you have that gap filler that can tell you the difference in the market and how you approach it and how you network. And I've learned that a lot of people don't know how to do those basic things anymore. So I love that Yellow Soul Tech has that in place. Yes. And um, and I also think it's a good place for people who are still on the fence just to be around people who are wanting to get into the industry, meet up people, work on their public speaking. Like I said, public speaking is is the precursor to be, being a, a, a good interviewer, an inter, uh, uh, to be good at interviewing, yeah. being good in public speaking. So having a platform that offers all that, um, because I've seen it, people get fired because they are so terrible at, 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 at sending emails, technical mm -hmm. emails, you know, because they never had to do that while driving Uber, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> or a 19 year old, because we, we keep talking about, yeah, College is not important. A 19-year-old should just get the technical knowledge and get a job. Okay, great. They understand the, 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 the technology enough to get a job. You think a 19-year-old can send a properly written uh, a technical email uh, um, to, uh, um, to, to their peers? No. Even with ChatGPT, you need to know what prompt to put in ChatGPT. You need to know when ChatGPT is BSing you because now all correspondence in ChatGPT starts with, I hope this email find, finds you well. Yep. So you have to be careful with that ChatGPT thing. So you, have, you actually need proper technical writing training. You see what I mean? If yep. not, you will be found out very quickly. Yes. You go, you go mess around and find oh, out. Oh, yes. <laughs> Listen, I've had so many people get fired and have to come back to my 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 training because someone told them just study for the uh, uh, for this certification and BS your way through uh, 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 an interview and yeah they got an interview on Friday where everybody was ready to go home anyway and they got the job and they can perform so yeah. I am not in the business of helping people with micro fixes we are in the business of helping you build a career, a sustainable career, help you understand how to grow this career. And we are not in the business of, uh, you know, training one trick ponies. So um, if, if, if you need something faster, quicker, if by January you want to be in a job, uh, we're not the right people. You know? Yeah, I love that. I love that transparency because y'all know my, my platform is all about being honest. So tell us a little bit about, and just last few questions, tell us a little bit about the average starting salary of a Linux system admin for jobs or a cloud for jobs. Yeah, it's definitely not $100,000 because that's that's the key, key word here. It's not to, realistic. To uh, Apparently, that's the key word on the, on, on, on the gram to actually get the clicks and the views. But it's usually between 80 and 90. And it really depends on where you are. It really depends on how you interview. It really depends on uh, are you going for a gov tech job or a private sector job? There's a lot of variables. There is such a thing also as the adaptive uh, uh, interview process. Chine, you know that. You come in, they start asking you question. If your level is too low, they lower the kind of question they ask you. If if you you might be doing good in an interview, but you get offered a junior position, you might come in for the junior position. You you 
you blow their mind so much, they offer you a higher position that's also open, but you, you didn't even think you were interviewing for. So it really, there's a lot of uh, var variables, you know, but I can tell you, this is a definitely a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollar career within yes, three years of properly designing your next step with us yes it's going to turn in quickly into a a, a six-figure career but we won't start there you most likely won't. And, and the and the interesting thing when people say fast track in my mind i don't think about I think about fast track as you deciding not to go into an associate's degree program or a four-year degree program and you doing this program. To me, this program is still fast track because for those of us who spent all of our money in college and in, and in advanced degrees, this is still fast track and it's still very, very equitable from a staying marketable type of place and it and you are you all are teaching people and you're actually training people versus mm -hmm. giving them a crash course and say okay now go find a job in tech yeah and also it's 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 also looking at return on investment it you know compared to what college would cost you compared to not doing anything would cost you in terms of uh opportunity cost um our program let's talk about it our linux for jobs program because th th there's that question in there our linux for jobs program is fifteen thousand five hundred, and our uh, 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 um our, our, our cloud for jobs program is fifteen five, going um going up to seventeen thousand in january and our linux for jobs program is ten thousand seven hundred. now if you look at the price tag, yeah, you can you can enroll or not enroll. But if you look at the return on investment, it's tenfold. But people mostly got, get stuck on the price tag and they don't look at, OK, what is that going to give me in terms of return? You know? I was about to say, they don't look like everything that they're getting in terms of the training because it takes training, that much. Yeah, not only training, but... The upper, let's say you were making sixty thousand dollars, and then I train you. You automatically, your market value becomes eighty-five. Yep. So your return on in investment is immediate. Yep. <laughs> you know, actually, you make a hundred percent return on investment or more. Yeah. But but most people don't look at. And uh, these things in terms of investment, they look at them in terms of expense. Sure. If you're looking at it in terms of expense, it's going to be expensive. If you're yeah. looking at it in terms of investment, you look at potential return on investment, which is not necessarily um, what and everybody are able to do. Robin asks, out of passion or interest in IT, what other skills should I put, should I assess myself for in an effort to predict a reasonable expectation of success? For example, do I need to be good uh, to be a good logical thinker, math whiz, et cetera? What other skills should a person have for this type of transition? A good logical thinker. Uh, you have to have a minimal um, uh, computer literacy skills. Do we test for that? This is one. Uh, uh, you have to have good computer literacy because a lot of people confuse computer literacy and IT training. Computer literacy is being able to move around a computer. We have a test for that. Um, um, critical thinking, we have a test for that. There is a predictor that's a very good predictor. We've back tested it. Everybody who go to get jobs fast, we back tested to that tests we gave them, they fall in a very particular uh, 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 um, bracket. So yes, critical thinking, uh, computer literacy, um, stick to witness, being able to start something and finishing it. A lot of people don't realize that, but this is, this is a skill you acquire. All right. Mm -hmm. And what else uh, is important? Um, the rest, we can help you acquire it, especially with the platform we're going to offer, which is, you know, technical writing, um, salary negotiation, all these skills you can acquire after that. But the base skills are definitely critical uh, thinking and um, 
and uh, computer literacy. What are some of the companies you've seen your students go into? Also, do you partner with certain companies for job placement? Um, I'll com um, it's it's so varied. We help people get into John Hopkins, uh, um, um, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric uh, um, uh, Administration, Sony, AWS, Red Hat. People go on to work directly for Red Hat, go on to work directly for AWS. Uh, um, uh, mid-level uh, tech startups, you name it, uh, we've helped people uh, uh, get jobs in these industries. So the industries our students um, end up in are very, very, very varied. How long does it take for, because those type of companies are depending on the company, whether it's tech startup, mid-level enterprise or big tech, how, how, and I understand you said that it's the timing of finding a role is, is also very, have you seen, let's say enterprise tech or medium-sized tech or tech startup, have you seen a difference in how long it takes if, say, if you go into a startup versus if you go into mid-size or vice versa? To get, get the offer? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. The smaller the, the, the company, the faster the offer comes. Yep. Yeah, the faster the cut. Uh, the, when you go um, two two ways, the offer comes fast. When the company is small, and when it's a um, it's a high clearance government contractor, they usually are so st starving so much for that particular role, they are eager to put you in the role because if you if you if they don't have someone in the role, they cannot build a government for that particular role. So having you in there ASAP helps them make money. So these are the, the two places that we see people get offers very fast. And the you know, and interview process moves fast. Have you seen it where, because I, I give people this advice all the time where people will don't even look at tech startups. They're looking at all the big tech companies trying to get into the big tech companies, which I don't think is a bad thing. I just think when you're transitioning into tech, you're also competing with people who have that enterprise level of experience and you have no tech experience. Yeah. Do you encourage people to go for more of the tech startups and in the, the medium-sized tech companies? Medium-sized. With, with, medium with the idea that they are still going to, with the advice that they're still going to get paid the type of salary that they're yeah. looking for? Medium size is the sweet spot because the tech startup requires uh, you to be more of an expert because the team tend to be smaller and they, they they expect you to do more, be more proficient and more stuff. Because because the team is smaller, you are touching more. Um, the big tech, um, their interview process are uh, is geared towards finding the unicorns of the marketplace because they can afford it just because they can afford it um so um the mid-size uh, enterprise this is where we see um that it's most um friendly to a transitioning uh, uh it tech uh, 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 it professional do you work with tier two public trust clearance um, I work with any, uh, anything, but for, for us to put you on the fast track of getting a job, you need at least a, a secret clearance. Secret is the minimum, uh, tier two public trust. It's still, um, not attractive to the marketplace. It's, 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 it's easy to get basically. So if you had to tell us one last thing about Yellowtail tech that would make somebody go, you know what? I'm just go ahead and do it. What would that be? Um, actually, I wouldn't do that. I would make sure I tell you um, transition for the right reasons, yes. not because this is a trend or uh, uh, or the, the the best thing that's going on social media. This 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 field is not for everyone. There's a lot of working alone because most likely you're going to get a job that's going to be remote. Although re the remote aspect has its ups, but it has its downs. Yep. Get in this business for the right reasons. 
It can't be just about the money. I tell people that all the time. It cannot be. It cannot be because you're going to lose uh, uh, drive and motivation very quickly if it's only about the money. You I have that. some type of uh, interest, genuine interest in IT. I love that. Well, Juby, thank you so much for just coming on and telling us about Yellow Cell Tech. I tell people about Yellow Cell Tech all the time because this is a program that I would tell people who are not like not everybody's fit for college. And that's understood, understandable. And it's it for me, it gives me like trade school type of vibe. And so and so for people who are more along the trades side of things instead of the college side of things. I think this is a really good opportunity for people who don't have the desire to go back to a full like two years or four year degree. So I think this is this is amazing. Y'all please tap in with Jabi um and his wife Paloma. They are amazing people. I've had a chance to get to know them over the last few months and it's been a pleasure to really get to know them. I put the link to Yellow Toe Tech in the chat a few times in the 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 video will be on my YouTube as well as uh, just the playback will be on my LinkedIn as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to play this back. And if you need any more information on Yellow Toe Tech, please make sure um, you reach out to either me or Juby. All right. And there is a job offer uh, um, announcement from Ashley, you know. To, to, to finish Let me this. i tell you that I received a job offer. I joined. Oh, I got to put this up. <laughs> you you better hey Ashley you better throw that in there. Uh, I know this isn't a Q and A, but I wanted to tell you that I received a job offer. I joined one of your Q and As a few months ago and expressed to you my total struggle at finding a BDR role in Atlanta because I'm currently living in Tallahassee. Um, anyway, I just wanted to thank you for your encouragement. All you doing the platform. That, You're welcome. That is a good way to end it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And in and, and the spirit of testimonials, now, Ashley, you know you got to send me a DM and tell me a little bit more so I can <laughs> randomly post you as an anonymous testimonial. But in the spirit of, of in the spirit of testimonials, now we'll leave you all with this. If you go on the Yellow Tail Tech website and you scroll down, the the yellow toe tech as a as a company as a program they post all of their testimonial videos from people who who went to the program and actually transitioned successfully into tech and it tells you their name it tells you where they transitioned from the course that they took and them being successful they also post like text messages and, and emails. They like screenshot everything. So, you know, all of it comes from real people because it's not cap. Trust me. It's not cap. I actually sat in on an interview and watched a few of them and I was like, oh, this is dope. So y'all, Yellow Toe Tech is the real deal. It will 100% help you break into tech. And I do believe that this is a program that, um, that will just allow you to, to streamline it a little bit more and for you to learn. Uh, this question just popped up. For those of us looking to make the transition into tech and are not prepared just yet to be able to make the financial commitment to a program of this caliber, what is the what is a bit of guidance that you can offer for starters? Join our community. Um, we're going to launch the community in, in January. We're going to actually uh, start putting up um, a wait list to join the community. Uh, I think it's there. Just be around uh, people who are interested. Um, start getting the the other perhaps non technical skills that will be necessary for the transition. Um, start there. Um, that's where I would uh, have you start, uh, Mayoni. Yeah. Thank you, Mayoni. I put the the link back in the chat for you to to go onto the platform and. Find where you can join the community. And, and Mayoni, you. you might be very surprised uh, that you can afford it. You know, we have uh, financing partners that can help you make this a reality if that's important to you. Because it has to be important enough for you to actually make it happen. Sure. And, you know, so you'd be surprised. We can we can help you. Check us out. Uh, you'll talk to an enrollment advisor and. You'll see if it if it's something you can do or not. Maybe at least book a ten minute call. Huh? At least book a ten minute call. Exactly. That's book a ten minute call. Let's chat and 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 take it from there. Don't count yourself out. You know. Right. Let the That's process right. count you out. If That's right.
It does. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, UB, for joining us. Uh, I'm definitely going to bring you back because I'm sure that we want we want to hear a lot more of the updates that you all have launched and all of that. So looking forward to bringing you back again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.